Hello everyone, welcome back to osteology classes. Today's topic is on osteology of scapula, which is a triangular flat bone located on the posterior side of the chest wall. So the scapula, it overlies from second uh, rib till seventh rib. So it covers from second rib to seventh rib and uh, it is interspersed bit with the ribs by muscles. So it, the fracture of scapula is quite rare. And here I want to talk about one congenital anomaly where the scapula develops in the neck, usually it develops in the neck. Later it descends down to the adult position that is the posterior side of the chest wall. Suppose it fails to descend down from the neck, it results in a syndrome called as Springle's deformity, which is otherwise called as uh, congenital high scapula. And if it is located in the neck, the scapula would be hypoplastic and it would be connected to these cervical vertebra uh, by means of uh, fibrous tissue or cartilaginous tissue or a bony bar which is called as vomovertebral body which is otherwise known as omovertebral body and, uh, and if surgeon tries to bring down the scapula to the adult position uh, there may be a chance of injuring the brachial plexus. So this is about the Springle's deformity and a small introduction about the scapula. So here you can see the two scapulae. This is the right scapula, this is the left scapula. So we know it is a flat, flat triangular bone and uh, present over the posterior part of the rib cage. To identify the side of the scapula, whether it is right or left, look for the glenoid cavity. This cavity is the glenoid cavity, which is present at the lateral angle of the scapula and it articulates with the head of the humerus to form shoulder joint. So the glenoid cavity should be on lateral aspect. Next, see for the processes. This beak-like process is called coracoid process. It should be on the anterior side. And posteriorly, this shelf-like projection, which is called as the spinous process, and it, uh, ha it continues to form a projection further called as acromion process. So this part should be on the dorsal aspect. So glenoid cavity on the lateral side, coracoid process on the anterior aspect, spinous process on the posterior aspect. Now let's begin with the features of scapula. There are two surfaces. This is the ventral surface where my fingers are moving is the ventral surface which is otherwise called as costal surface of scapula because it overlies the ribs, costa. And here is the dorsal surface. This is the dorsal surface or posterior surface of uh, scapula which is interspersed by a shelf like projection which is called as the spinous process. And uh, the upper border, this is the upper border of the scapula and this is the medial border and the thick lateral border of the scapula. And here is the inferior angle of scapula, lateral angle is formed by the glenoid cavity. This is the medial superomedial angle. So first about the glenoid process, the glenoid process presents the glenoid cavity which I already said which is a shallow cavity articulates with the head of the humerus to form shoulder joint. Here is the beak like projection which is called coracoid process. This projection should be projected towards lateral side. And next about the spinous process, spinous process is a shelf like process divides the dorsal surface into Upper part, this is the supraspinous fossa, where my finger is moving is the supraspinous fossa and below is the infraspinous fossa. So supraspinous fossa, infraspinous fossa, which are the parts of dorsal surface divided by the shelf-like process called as spinous process. If we trace further, this spinous process continues to project further. This projection is called as acromion process. Acromion process is the lateral projection of spinous process and superior surface of our acromion process usually it bears a facet you can see anterior superiorly we can see a facet is present and this facet articulates with the clavicle lateral end of the clavicle to form acromioclavicular joint. So, next about the notches, notches of the scapula this is the right scapula we know. This is the left scapula. So here 
between the coracoid process if we trace down the superior border there is a notch near to the coracoid process this notch is called as suprascapular notch this notch is called as suprascapular notch it is converted to a foramen in living by a ligament a ligament bridges this notch converting into a foramen this ligament is called suprascapular ligament and suprascapular artery passes above the ligament and suprascapular nerve passes within the notch below the ligament so that is about the suprascapular notch the next notch is this one is the spinoglenoid notch where my finger is moving this is the spinoglenoid notch between the lateral border of the spinous process and the dorsal surface of the neck of the scapula that is just below the glenoid cavity this spinoglenoid notch uh, through this notch suprascapular nerve and vessels pass from supraspinous fossa to infraspinous fossa the ventral surface of the uh, scapula ventral surface is otherwise called costal surface and this ventral surface it provides attachment to subscapularis muscle which is a multipinnate muscle you can see the lines here which provides attachment to the intermuscular septa of subscapularis muscle so this fossa is otherwise called as subscapular fossa because it provides attachment to subscapularis muscle next about the dorsal surface supraspinous fossa this is the supraspinous fossa so above the spinous process supraspinous fossa provides attachment to supraspinatus muscle infraspinous fossa provides attachment to infraspinatus muscle so supraspinatus infraspinatus which are separated by the spinous process next we shall talk about the attachments and uh, bor along the borders border on this is the dorsal surface of medial border this is the ventral surface of medial border so ventral surface ventral surface of the medial border provides attachment to serratus anterior muscle serratus anterior muscle has got eight digitations it gains its origin by eight digitations so first uh, three digitations are inserted into this medial border that is uh, along the medial border and rest of the five digitations are inserted to the inferior angle of the scapula they are inserted into the inferior angle of the scapula next to dorsal side of the medial border dorsal side of the medial border we can divide into three parts by the attachment of this uh, spinous process this is the first part this is second part and this is the third part so the uh, above the spinous process this part dorsal surface provides attachment to levator scapulae muscle so levator scapulae muscle attaches to the upper part of the medial border on dorsal surface then at the attachment of the spinous process rhomboidus minor will attach minor will attach and below this level rhomboids major rhomboidus major it is attached to the lower part of the medial border so that is about the muscle attachments to the medial border next about the lateral border lateral border it provides attachment to three muscles the upper part teres minor muscle then the lower part teres major muscle and near the inferior angle of the scapula latissimus dorsi muscle so these teres minor and major uh, there are and the, this muscles are separated by circumflex scapular vessels which divides the muscle into two parts so the teres minor is further divided into two parts by circumflex circumflex scapular vessels which divides the muscle into two parts next about the superior border of the scapula superior border we already heard of suprascapular notch this is the suprascapular notch just near to the suprascapular notch on the lateral uh, medial edge of the suprascapular notch provides origin to homohyoid muscle so homohyoid muscle is attached to the here that is the inferior belly of homohyoid attaches to the uh, near the edge of the suprascapular notch next we shall talk about the attachment to the processes so we know this is the left scapula this is the right scapula pause pananga 
Next about the coracoid process. The tip of the coracoid process provides origin to coracobrachialis muscle. The tip of the coracoid process provides origin to coracobrachialis muscle and also to short head of biceps brachii. So, short head of biceps brachii, coracobrachialis together gains their origin from tip of the coracoid process forming conjoint tendon. Next, superior surface of the coracoid process that is the upper part of the coracoid process provides uh, insertion to the pectoralis minor muscle and coracoclavicular ligament also attached here. So, pectoralis minor muscle is inserted to the upper border of coracoid process and coracoid process also gives attachment to coracoclavicular ligament. One thing to be noted here, coracoid process is an example of atavistic epiphysis means in reptiles the coracoid process is a separate bone but in humans it is attached to the scapula and thus it represents an atavistic epiphysis. So that is about coracoid process which is an atavistic epiphysis. Next about the acromion process, this is the acromion process already we know the articulating surface over the acromion process. So lateral border of the acromion process provides attachment to deltoid. It gives origin to the middle fibers of deltoid. Next we shall see about the spinous process. Now I am so showing the dorsal side spinous process. So the uh, it exhibits a crust you can see it is quite thicker and it uh, shows a crust here uh, showing the upper lip and the lower lip and the intermediate area. We can see the upper lip, lower lip and the intermediate area. So, the spinous process upper lip provides insertion to trapezius muscle along the upper border of the spinous process upper lip provides insertion to trapezius muscle, lower lip provides origin to deltoid muscle. So, deltoid muscle posterior fibers gains their origin from the spinous process and middle fibers from the lateral side of acromion process. Next about the glenoid cavity. Glenoid cavity, cavity, above to the glenoid cavity there is a projection which is called as supraglenoid tubercle and below the glenoid cavity this projection is called as infraglenoid tubercle. Supraglenoid tubercle gives origin to long head of biceps muscle which is an intracapsular in origin which uh, gets origin within the shoulder joint. So, supraglenoid tubercle gives origin to long head of biceps muscle. Infraglenoid tubercle gives origin to long head of triceps brachii muscle. So, biceps brachii gets its origin from supraglenoid tubercle. Triceps brachii gains its origin from infraglenoid tubercle. Next about the ossification, uh, it has 8 centers, 1 primary center and 7 secondary center. The primary center appears in the body at 8th week. So, this is the body of the scapula. So, the primary center appears for the body during 8th week of gestation and fuses uh, with the um, other parts, with other processes and forms by the age of uh, 15 years. Next about the secondary centers. Secondary centers appears like co for coracoid process. This uh, appears for coracoid process secondary center and then uh, there are two secondary centers which appears for coracoid process, two secondary centers which appear for the acromion process as well and one center appears along the medial border, this thin border, medial border of the scapula and inferior angle and lower part of the rim of the glenoid cavity. So, lower part of the rim of the glenoid cavity. So, I will repeat secondary centers appears coracoid process 2 then acromion process 2 then one on each that is the medial border of the scapula one for the inferior angle of the scapula and one along the rim of the glenoid cavity lower part of the rim of the glenoid cavity. These appear uh, at, at about puberty and fuse uh, by with the body by 20th year after birth. So, that is about the ossification of okay, next about the surface marking of the scapula. 
we know the superior border here is the superior border of the scapula superior border of the scapula overlies the second rib and the spine of the scapula it is related to third thoracic vertebra it is related to the third it is present in living at the level of third thoracic vertebra and inferior angle of the scapula it is present over the seventh rib it is present over the seventh rib and next important thing about the acromial end of the uh, scapula the acromial end is usually palpated below the lateral end of the clavicle this end is considered as uh, this point is considered as a surgeon's lighthouse because no neurovascular bundle crosses the acromial end of so this completes the osteology of scapula thank you